All right, well, let's jump into it. How we're going to be talking about the sacred celestial calendar. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to briefly talk about the calendar, and then we're going to, you know, um, go into any questions. But do not hold your questions, guys. Please ask your questions because my plan is, you know, Lord willing, we will actually go through this. If there's anything that's causing confusion or anything that needs to be added, I can go ahead and edit it if I can do it really quickly. And then at the end of this class, I'll save this PDF file that this is and then upload it to my Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you guys can, can uh, get to it. If you look in the description of the video, there is a opportunity to download the main portion of this thing already. If you have your computer and you wanted to look closely, you might check the description for or um, what it says, uh, something like download the uh, sacred celestial calendar, a matonic thing, or go ahead and get that. Um, but then at the end, you can add this to it. Okay. So All right. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, let me, let me go back to this slide here. Now, this right here was one of the first attempts to create a sacred calendar that you know everybody could use. Mm -hmm. And basically, what I did to create this one was basic just got some images off of uh, the internet and then used a couple of things to uh, create this one but I can't really take credit for it because some of this stuff in here I just copied and pasted okay and I guess it may have been too simple because this is my creation this is what I turned it into okay mm -hmm. okay so what I'm going to do in this class is I'm going to attempt to um, explain this calendar right this right here has enough information in it that it can actually be a perpetual calendar, meaning you could paste this on your wall and it could be the calendar that we use until it, well, until the end of time or until we find out that there's an error in it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I ask you guys to do that. This is the main reason why I do these classes, these collaborative classes like this, is because we need, we need, we need peer review. Right. You know, I come from the academic world and peer reviews are important. You know, it means something when your peers look at the work that you're doing and then, you know, they don't really have any any discrepancies or they don't find any errors in it, then the rest of us can um, have some good information. Right. So, like I said, we are attempting to explain this calendar. Again, it is a perpetual calendar, but notice down here that this was Rev 1 of this calendar. Down in the corner, this is Rev 1. This is uh, my first attempt at this. I already know that I have to change it because some of this stuff goes in counter direct, counterclockwise, and some goes clockwise. I believe that was Christian's idea. Mm -hmm. No, that was my idea based on what Christian said. You okay. know, it would be, be confused. So what I'm going to do is make it more like a clock where everything moves in the same direction. Okay. So, But it'll work for now, but the Rev 2, some things will be flipped around backwards okay. so that everything moves in the same clockwise motion. Okay. All right. Now, as far as the sacred calendar is concerned, the basis of the sacred calendar we can read over here in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. Mm -hmm. This is where we find out that our Father's calendar is a celestial calendar. Right. You may have heard people say before that it is a, a solar lunar calendar. Mm -hmm. Which I've one, heard that. Yeah, they, yeah, but they're really referring to the Jewish calendar. We're going to touch on that just a little bit in this in this uh, PowerPoint presentation. But the Father's calendar includes not only the sun and the moon, but it takes into account the stars as well. Okay. And 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 so you need all three to make up the Father's calendar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why we call it a celestial calendar. Like I said in the last class, we're trying to coin that phrase. Okay. Yeah, the sacred celestial calendar. Um, we'll get it some, get it good somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, like I said, I'm running through these pretty pretty quickly. Um, if you need more detail on the calendar, we have a playlist on the calendar, going all the way back. You remember the first class we did on the calendar? Um, I do not. Yeah, you'd actually be get a, a kick out of it because in the very first class that we did on the so-called Enoch calendar, we were calling it at the time. Mm -hmm. You asked the question, "Why do we need a calendar?" <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning. That was the first <laughs> class we had. To, yeah, we already got a calendar. Why we need another one? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what you said. <laughs> and so we went through uh, the book of uh, Jubilees and some others that showed us if we do not understand the sacred calendar, we will be in error. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Right. And we found that in that class yeah. that it is absolutely necessary yeah. because otherwise you can't keep up with the feast days then you can't keep up with the Sabbath days if you don't understand the sacred calendar. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And even those of us who have gotten used to calling up the Jewish community and saying, hey, when is Passover? Well, a lot of us learn in 2121 that that ain't a good idea. We can't rely on them guys. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to find that out here a little bit here. But if you really want to know how the sacred calendar works, you have to go to the uh, book of Enoch. Okay. okay. He has three books. Uh, this uh, may be the longest book. Enoch the prophet um, has a lot of chapters, over, over 80 chapters in it. But in about chapter 71, chapter 72, depending on the translation, you'll find what's called the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. Mm -hmm. We learned in Genesis that Enoch walked with God, it said, right. walked with the Elohim. And what we read here, we actually find out the name of this particular Elohim that he was walking with. This was Uriel. Well, we don't see it here, do we? Um, no, I don't know. No, yeah, I, it was actually, in, this starts on verse 4. Um, if we went back to verse 1, we see, you know, that it was um, Uriel that actually told him how this celestial calendar works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we cover that a lot. So right here, what we're seeing is basically the rundown. You okay. see, it's talking about gates. It's talking about the position of the sun. It even references the moon down here. Um, it basically tells us how the entire calendar works. Okay. And I, I it, it, and it's a lot of detail, guys, here. But it, you can find links to this book in the description and you could go in and read this for yourself. Right. Now, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time, like I said. Um, but now, before we, first thing we need to talk about on, on this calendar, I don't want to say it's my calendar because basically all, I did, all I'm doing is trying to um, visualize what Enoch is talking about. Mm -hmm. you know? And But the first thing we have to understand on that, on that image is what they call the Matonic cycle. Okay. You know what that is? I do not. Apparently our celestials, the way our father has set up these the uh, sun, the moon, and the stars is they follow a 19 year pattern. Every 19 years they repeat themselves. Okay. Yeah. So if you was born on a new moon on a Thursday and it, it, you if 19, when you turn 19 your birthday was the exact same. Okay. Same day, you had the same moon phase, you had the same sun, same position, everything was the same. Okay. Except you was 19 years older. Right. Well, that's the way that the, 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 the Matonic cycle works, is every 19 years it repeats. Mm -hmm. Right. And a guy named Hillel too used this first to create what he called the Jewish calendar. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and we're going to see that here. Matter of fact, let me go to the next slide. Um, this right here, what you see going around this, these numbers here are the Matonic cycle. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, it's slow down. So let me explain this. Like I said, if you guys don't understand something, help me by letting me know that you don't get it. Okay. Because I live and breathe this stuff, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, it makes way too much sense sometimes for somebody who's brand new. So stop me and slow me down. And let's get it because if you don't understand it, I promise you there's ten other people at least that don't understand it and they ain't gonna ask. They just okay. gonna yeah, they just gonna go on. Yeah. Alright, so when you're looking at this, this metonic cycle, this is what makes this calendar perpetual. Okay. This is what makes this calendar right here, you can print this off, put it on your wall, and say, This is my calendar, and you, this is it. You don't have to change every year. You don't have to change every month. You don't mm -hmm. have to. Ch yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the way it works is you have this metonic cycle here. So, what this is showing you is the zero percent moon for the very first. Uh, and I don't want to call it a month because if we're talking about gates and such. You, you, the, the sun, the, the moon is what makes up the month. Right. But this, but these dates right here. Um, um, well, I, I, let, me, let me slow down. Let me say that, say that again. This date right here is the zero percent moon, the first zero percent moon for each sacred celestial year. Okay. So, when you go to a year, if you have a zero percent moon on March the first, if if you if you just happen to see. If the 0% moon falls on March the 1st, 
you know that you're at this part of the cycle. Okay, now I'm going to ask questions because you said ask questions. And Absolutely. One, if I don't understand, there's probably 10 people who. We need a who whole lot of Stacy moments. It. We need a lot of Stacy moments in this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have all day. But. Uh, <laughs> So you're saying a zero percent moon? You're saying that there's no sighting at absolutely. all. Absolutely, you that's, cannot see anything. That's the zero, okay. nothing, absolute. And you'll see why I did that in a second. This is um, what man will actually call the new moon. But anyway, we're we're, we're going to go. All right, so let's go to the next slide. We're going to come back to this one. All right, here is I, don't, I, I hate to say mine. But I put this together. You mm -hmm. can see my name right there. I slid my little name in there so you can see it in there. In the fight right there. Mm -hmm. Letting you know that I did this. So, and, and the per I want you to go in and check this. This is the Matonic cycle. But in order to create this document, I had to go to the web and pull down moon data for each single month over the course of 19 years. Every month. For, that's over 200 months of data here. Mm -hmm. So, to assume that there is no errors in here, um, I, don't, I wouldn't do that. Right. Somebody's got to check this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've checked it three times, you know, but that's not a peer review. Right. We need somebody to be that person that does the work, go in and check this and say, hey, this is right. Mm -hmm. You know, so the rest of us can, you know, feel confident with it. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm like 95%, but there's no way I'm going to be 99 with only my eyes checking. Some Somebody else going to have to come in and say, yeah, that, that looks right to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But this is the Montonic cycle. This right here. You can actually put with the one we just looked at before, put it side by side, and actually these two documents should go together. Okay. This one mm -hmm. to give you the display, and this one is giving you the data. Okay. You take the data from this one, plug it into this one, and you can understand where we're at. If you wake up from a coma, you know, 20 years from, or, or in 2033, you can start up here where it, in 2033 right here, some of you might not be able to see this, but it's right under the end in Matonic. And you can follow until the month that you are in and you can um, figure out where we're at. Okay, well, let me just state this because people may be wondering and, you know, that question that I had so many years ago about why we need another uh, calendar when we have a calendar. I think, you know, everyone should know going into this that the reason that these calendars are so important is because we do want to get the feast days. Right? You have to get the feast days right. You right. have to do them in a the proper season. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to say is. And I hesitate. I'm not going to say it's absolutely necessary to get the Sabbath day right because mm -hmm. the rule says to work six days and take right. the seventh day off. Mm -hmm. But we learn in Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 through 3, that there are spiritual things going on on the Sabbath day that we, if we're at work, we're not going to catch it. Right. right? So we want to get precise so we can be right there. When you look at the story of the Messiah, it seems as though many of, or even most of, maybe even all of the miracles that he did were on the Sabbath day. Mm. Yeah, that's why he kept getting in trouble, because everything he did was on the Sabbath day. And if it wasn't that big a deal, it seemed like he would have just waited to the next day. Right. right. So there's some, some significance in that. Okay. All right, so let me show you how this works really quickly. This, mm -hmm. this right here, this, this Matonic uh, uh, chart here that we created. Um, and I'm going to pick on the Jubilee year for it. Okay. Right. When you go back to it over here, you'll see this Jubilee year that's kind of stuck right here in 2024. Mm -hmm. 2024 is the Jubilee year. We've covered that in many, many classes. We're only going to briefly touch on it here. But when we look closely at that date, you see how I got this box around it saying that it's the 120th Jubilee? Right. That's the beginning of the 120th Jubilee. Mm -hmm. That's significant, right? Because mm -hmm. we're really not supposed to see 120. 120, 120 is supposed to be it. Yeah, we're not supposed to, well, we're supposed to see it, but it's supposed to be something different going on when we see this 120. But anyway, let's, we'll save that for another class. But what this is saying is, okay, in the year 2024, there's a Jubilee year. Mm -hmm. And we will cover that in other classes. Now, in this, what this is showing, you see this 1002? Yes. This is saying that the 0% moon, 0% moon, not the new moon that you're going to go see, the 0% moon will appear at on October the 2nd, 10-2, at 1 p.m. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the, re the reason why I did this is because of the accuracy and how hard it is to actually go see the new moon. You can't really 
determine when you're going to see the visual moon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all this is really doing is giving us a heads up. Okay. On this day, October the 2nd, you will actually, uh, you're not, you can go out to see it that night, but you're going to see nothing. And then the next night, you'll go out and you uh, will take a look at the uh, moon again. And from what I observed, it's more like a day and a half from this day, somewhere between 24 and uh, 36 hours mm -hmm. that you will actually see the new moon. So if, it's, if it appears at 0% on 10 2, then at, at 1 o'clock, you could see it on 10 3 at sunset, or you could see it on 10 4 at sunset. Okay. All right, so that's how that works. Now, so when we're looking in this year here, right? You see, we're saying 2021 okay. up here at the top? Last year. Well, okay. <laughs> well, we got to remember we're on the celestial calendar. Right. right it doesn't right. end. Right. Our right. year, you know, we didn't celebrate. Yes. No, I didn't bust now, now firecracker off yesterday. Right. You know, or eat now a piece of barbecue yesterday, okay. or listen to now a blues song or nothing. That was not my New Year's. Right. Right. So, so forgive me when I say the beginning of the year, which was back in uh, April 11th of the year, April 11th at uh, looks like nine o'clock. We should have had a zero percent moon. Okay. Okay. And that would have been in the month Nisan, right there. So mm -hmm. that's how this works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go on. Now on this slide, so we went to the website. Um, I referenced it yesterday. I can't remember what it is. I don't have it here, but. Uh, Probably put it in a link somewhere so you can see this website where you can put in this moon data. But when we come over here to April the 11th, you see that it confirms that there was a 0% moon. Right. That's what we were supposed to see, and that's what we're seeing. Yes. Right? Now, so we take that data. So we just went to the data sheet. Now we come back over to the calendar and plug that information in because mm -hmm. we want to figure out where we're at on this thing, mm -hmm. and we find out that we're right here on this cycle. Okay. Right? There we are there. And there you see the numbers 2021 corresponding to the year 5994. Search our channel for 5994. You can find out how we know what year we're in. We've, we've, we've done detailed, detailed classes on this and, you know, asking you guys feedback. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how we know where we're at on this, this uh, celestial cycle here. Okay. Okay. And, but notice how this Notice this metonic cycle has this funny looking shape. Yeah. Kind of looks weird, right? Yeah. It actually has seven points on it. Okay. Which is really interesting because it has seven points out and seven points in. Mm, and then okay. a couple of additional points like right here, but it's like weird. Yeah. Well, notice this distance right here. That's the distance from, it, from here to here. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look up here at March the 18th, notice... Yeah. That there is no distance. Right. Because that is the very beginning. Anything that falls before March the 18th will actually be the 13th month or the 12th month. Okay. Right. And and that's how we know the beginning. Our father set his, his thing up so perfectly that we can look and say, okay, the beginning of the metonic cycle is when the 0% the moon appears on March the 18th. Okay. Right. And then you keep going around the, around the thing. Okay. Now, we're going to come back to this. All right. All right. So now over here is where we get the information about the Jubilee year. The book of Jubilees. There's a book called Jubilees, and it is the only book that you can find out where the, when the Jubilee year is. You know, you have so many people who are trying to figure out when the Jubilee is based on the, the Messiah's birthday or when this happened or when this happened. Jewish people did this. It must have been the, the uh, Jubilee year. Um, this happened. Uh, it must have been the Jubilee year. Now, no, that's not the way it worked. He, it, you, it, he, when our father wrote this scripture, he expects anybody to be able to pick it up and get the same message. Mm -hmm. He doesn't expect. You don't have to come on to coach in the fight and find out what day it is. Right. That's not that's not sustainable. The yeah. internet is not going to be here, right. right? And he doesn't expect you to go to some prophet that's going to say, "I had a dream and this is what the father told me." He told me that this is the year blank 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 and the Sabbath day did no. He wants you to be able to do it yourself. We have to be consistent, people. And what was that, Denmark? Right. We got to be on the same page. Yeah. 
and and you can't do that based on dreams, interpretation of dreams, when you think the Jewish people did that, and when they did that. No, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. If you want to know when the Jubilee is, Jubilee is, you're going to have to come to the book of Jubilees, particularly chapter 50 and verse 4 tells you exactly when the Jubilee year is, and that's how we came up with the 5994. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, check our work. Now, so let's switch gears here just a little bit. All we got a little bit of parts to put together here. Now we need to talk about the gates and portals. Okay. okay. Now, this here is another one of my designs. Yes. It needs double check. Everything I do do need to be double checked. Like if you watched my video yesterday, how many times did I say hell when I was supposed to say heaven? Right. Right. So we're just double check. You know, we make. We. I am not infallible. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. And you know. And you know, I'm kind of speeding a little bit, but anyway. So this right here is a pictorial diagram of Enoch's gates and portals. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, these right here is the representation of the stars. We know that the sun. We can see, you know, the sun. We know the sun. You know, it um, actually moving through the celestials. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we're at in the zodiac now, or that, but it, you know how it changes the zodiacs every month or so mm -hmm. well it also goes through these particular gates every 30 days okay right and this is important because when you have a gate like right here in the first gate when you have a new which is the gate we're in mm -hmm. when you see the moon then you you uh know that we are in that particular month okay right so there's a there's all three representations the the sun is represented here with if with December the 18th. That's the number of where the sun is. Mm -hmm. The um, stars is represented here with these gates, right? Okay. And now all you need is the moon's report, and you'll know what day we're on. Right. Sun, moon, and stars. Okay. Right. Now here in Enoch 71, you find out how that works. Okay. Mm -hmm. I promise you, this has taken hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. Meditating, praying, trying to figure out how and what this look what this looks like, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I'm putting it here in this PowerPoint, so you can read it. You can even push the pause button if you know YouTube is working right. You can push the pause button, and you can see these verses as it's going through these particular gates. Okay. Matter of fact, let's read this one right here, verse 24, just so we can get an idea of what we're talking about. Okay. Then the sun goes from the fifth gate as it sets in the fifth gate of the west and rises in the fourth gate for 31 days on account of its signs setting in the west. So it's talking about how the sun is traveling in and out of these particular gates and it's telling us how long it stays in each one of these gates or these portals. Okay. All right. And then you see down on here, it kind of wraps it up and tells us when the end of the year is um, here. Mm -hmm. Talking about these 364 days here, um, that's the end of the year. Um, matter of fact, no, it ain't. It's on this slide right here that talks about the end down here in verse 42. You get to the end of you see how many verses you have to go through to put this together. Mm -hmm. But once you do, it looks like this. Okay. This is what you get. Okay. You get All a right. nice little clean little table here that says the first month, the month number one will be when the sun is in the fourth gate, which starts on or after March the 20th. Okay? And okay. it lasts for 30 days. Okay. And you can go down and get, you, you can look at these. Now, the way you use this information is, okay, you want to know when the first day of the first month of the year is? Well, you look for the first well, you look for the first new moon mm -hmm. that falls on or after March the twentieth, mm -hmm. and then you and then after that you wait thirty days and look for another new moon. You'll know you're in the second month. The sun should be in the fifth portal. Okay. And if you have a sundial, you can actually have the sun casting its shadow in these particular portal in these in these gates. Wow. You know, so if when the when the sun is dark and the moon uh, won't give its light and all of that, mm -hmm. you, we may lose track of time. Well, when it does start to shine again. Assuming that you know the planet is still in the same orbit, mm -hmm. we we can we will know what time it is. You know, mm -hmm. if we've been out for been unaware of what's going on for three and a half days or three and a half years, which I, you know thing, yeah, you, you when we get back, we we this is how we know when we're at. Mm -hmm. Right? We may not have a calendar to tell us when May the nineteenth is, right. but we do have the gates. Right. Right. Our father never expected us to depend on man's calendar for anything. Right. right? 
That's man's calendar, his stuff. All right? So when we're coming back and we're looking at the data sheet, the Matonic data sheet, we look down, we're in, we know this first column represented 2021. This is when we put this together. This first column represented 2021. So we come all the way down looking for January. We see that uh, 12 four was in Kislu or Keslev and then we said the first zero uh, percent moon or the zero percent moon of Tevet will be on the evening of January 2nd which is today yeah right mm -hmm. so you, if you look on your calendar it should say new moon today okay right mm -hmm. but anybody who's you know been around and been doing this for a while they know you ain't gonna see no new moon if you go out there tonight right you just can't trust what just because it said it on the calendar don't mean that it's actually gonna be there and actually today it's this evening we'll start our sabbath day right right so we'll go through the sabbath day on the zero percent moon mm -hmm. and then tomorrow we'll start looking for the new moon okay. right we start up because we're ready to start a new month right mm -hmm. all right and so we see here that on this table, we see how it has uh, December the 18th right there. What this is telling us is that when we get to Tevet, when we get to December the 18th, right. is when any any the first new moon after December the 18th puts us in the, the month Tevet. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go on. We're looking back at the moon data. We're looking at 10-2, which is... Today, January the second, and we yep, we confirm that yes, there is a zero percent moon. Right. You know, so everything, praise the Father in heaven, is working out so far. Right. You know, um, we can make sure we get all nineteen, you know, years of this thing, all two hundred months of this thing going, we we'd be good. But it's working out so far. All right. So let's go on. Now, again, that was the zero percent moon. You're not going to see anything. You should go look. Because when it actually appears, you want to have confidence that it wasn't the day before. Right. I've had plenty of people who had clouds in their area, or they went out there late, or they missed it, mm -hmm. and then they came back and saw it the next day, and they're like, hey, I saw the new moon today. Right. And I'm like, good for you, but you know, everybody else saw it yesterday. Right. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. so, when, so when you're looking here on Sunday the 2nd, you'll see a 0% moon, there's nothing. And then on the 3rd, you start to see a little bit of light start to shine over there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about what the new moon will look like when you go out there tomorrow night. If it, if it appears, it's going to be that little sliver of a moon right, at, right after sunset on tomorrow night, maybe the 4th. We have to go see. But my point is, is that it's very tiny. Okay. And you only have like a 30 minute window to see it. Right. Right. But Levi's all over the world. You can check with websites like truthofyahweh.com gives mm -hmm. people the opportunity to come in and put in their information on when they saw the new moon. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a really big deal. People do this all over the world. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the Muslims are all looking at the moon, the Jewish community observing this stuff. Everybody who is who wants to be with the sacred calendar is observing when this actual new moon will start, so they'll know when their month will start and when their Sabbath days will start. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, since we're do so, at this I guess they'll make the um, uh, this will be the new moon prediction part of our video. Right. right? We are predicting that we will see a new moon on uh, January the third. That's a prediction. You know, we have to verb. We, we have to work off of observation, not calculation. Right. Now, if we do see the new moon on the third then that will be the evening and it will actually start the first day of the month which will end on the next day at sunset the fourth we're anticipating that the fourth will be the first day of the tenth month mm -hmm. the month of Tevet. Right. okay mm -hmm. see how this works mm -hmm. all right so let's go on so now back over here to if i call that the data sheet what i'm gonna call this We'll figure it out. What, what, what if I invest the data sheet? I just came over there. <laughs> now, what is this, the pictorial diamond? But anyway, so now we have the data that told us 10-2. So now we come back to this data sheet right here, or whatever you want to call it, and we're looking for the new moon that falls after December the 18th, and again, it points us to uh, Tevet. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go on. Now. Tevet is the 10th month. Mm -hmm. This is how we know what month we're in. See how simple it is? Mm -hmm. the, the new moon after December the 18th puts you in the 10th month just that easy. Okay. It don't matter where you at, when you at. All you got to have is uh, that data to know when 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 this is. You see how it starts March the 19th down here? Right. The first new moon after March the 19th is going to be the beginning of the year. Then you have April 19th. The next one is going to be the yeah. second month. Mm -hmm. and then May the third month until you get all the way around to the 10th month. And it should be interesting to note that the word December 
has the root word deca in it, which means ten. Oh, okay. Okay. You didn't know that? I did not know that. Well, you didn't know that the root word of November is Nova, which means nine, and October, oct means ten. Right. Yeah, and that's seven, that kind of, that's based off somebody else's name, but they was actually trying to tell us when the months were, mm. and it just so happened, yeah. All right? The tenth month starts after December 10th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was like that until they changed the calendar to make it January 1st. Everything was good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, so there's some argument. Somebody's on here saying, hey, how is he saying that we in uh, uh, Hanukkah and this is the 10th month and all of this stuff he's saying? Right. Well, the Messiah proves that this calendar is correct and the other calendar is wrong. The Jewish calendar is wrong. It oh. proves it. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verses 21, 22. Okay. This is coming out of John 10 and this is verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. Dedication, which is the Hanukkah. Hanukkah right. means mm -hmm. dedication, and it was winter. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And then you look down there with 23. And Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. So you have the Messiah walking around during the Feast of Dedication in the winter time. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Jewish calendar for the year 2021, they celebrated... Uh, Hanukkah in November. Right. And it was not winter. Well, you look down here, the first day of winter is December the 21st, according to man's standards. Right. Not the sacred calendar standards, but even according to man's standards, because we still ain't in winter time yet. Right. It, we, ain't, we ain't there yet. We're going to get to that in a second. Right. But even in man's standards, December the 21st was the first day of winter. Hmm. So you have them celebrating Hanukkah in the fall. Mm. So that proves that they are on a different calendar. How can the Messiah be walking around during the Feast of Dedication in the wintertime and these Jewish people are walking around during the Feast of Dedication in the fall? Right. They're right. on a different calendar. Yeah, or else they're saying that scripture is wrong. <laughs> hey, well, yeah, well. All right. Now, this is what's actually going on here. Okay. The Jewish calendar is based on calculation and not observation. Okay. You remember this metonic cycle that I keep? Showing you mm -hmm. this chart. Let me see. I might have it the next one. Let's see. Well, anyway, the, the, the big old data sheet, I call it. Mm -hmm. This is where I got the idea from. Okay. The Jewish calendar is based on that same kind of deal. The only problem is they got a few months wrong. And, and because they did it so long ago. Like, I ain't going to say that Hillel 2. Hillel 2 is the one created this thing back during the time of Constantine. He was on the persecution. He was the, the uh, uh, head dude under the Jewish community in charge of telling everybody when the feast days and everything was. But he was on the heavy persecution from Constantine who wanted to kill him or make him get rid of the calendar. Right. So to appease Constantine, he came up with this metonic cycle which basically took our focus off of the moon and put it on a calculation. Well, Constantine was happy with that because every so often you would get off track. So no longer are we observing, we're doing calculations. It's based on a calculation. Right. That's why every so often they're they're like twenty twenty one, they're completely off. But then in twenty twenty two they're gonna be back on track again. So they're going so they're not even going out and observing the moon as we were um, we were told to do and as were done back in uh, the earlier days they're now just sitting behind a desk and figuring it out. Well, actually, they are observing the moon. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Jewish calendar is a solar lunar calendar. Okay. So, a, so the moon plays a part in their calculation. It's the sun. It's the it's the stars that's not being account, accounted Counted. for. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. when the sun is, and I don't know my zodiacs or whatever, but you see right, you see back up here that there was a zero percent moon on three thirteen. Okay. That was March the 13th at 4. Mm -hmm. That's what the Jewish community in the year 2021 declared to be the uh, first month. Okay. The 0% the moon for the first month. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we understand that to be Adar 2 or the 13th month because when you look at the position of the sun relative to the stars, we were still in winter time. Okay. On, on March the 13th. Okay. Right? If I was to go in and ask when is the first day of spring, it's going to tell me March the 20th. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. March the 13th was actually in the winter time, and that's how they started their calendar a month early. Wow. If they had to have the if they had had the report of the the stars, 
then they would have waited until the, the sun entered the fourth portal or the fourth gate to declare the first month and it wouldn't have a problem. This is the difference between the celestial calendar and the Jewish calendar. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, with all of that, this is what our month looks like. Okay. I've seen the calendar. Yeah, this is the <laughs> one we kind of try to put out every month. Um, if the internet keeps going past January the uh, 13th, I may do a better job of doing these uh, using uh, spreadsheet uh, data sheets to to you know make it do some stuff. But I, I don't want to make nobody be thinking that we can be like Hillel too, and we don't have to observe. All of this is doing is acting as an aid for us to know when it is that we're supposed to go out there and look. And we have it represented here. You have the sighting of the new moon up here, Keslev uh, 29, January the third. Mm -hmm. Followed by the new moon day, Tevet 1, January the 4th. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then, so that right there will fall on a Tuesday. And that's the new moon day. New moon day will fall on a Tuesday. And then the Sabbath days will fall on Tuesdays for the rest of until we get another new moon. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then you see some other stuff. that we, This is another one of our creations over here. It deserves, you know, somebody go in. Maybe not so much as the other one because this is just a one month thing. You know, this is the one you ball up and throw away because mm -hmm. next year it's going to look different. Right? Mm -hmm. But even still, you can see information on here, you know, that we put out every month. Like, may, some people may be confused, so let's go ahead and explain it just a little bit. Like, right here on, on the first day of the week. Ignore that Wednesday part. That's man's part just to help us, help guide us a little bit. But the first day of the work week is a given day. Okay. okay. So after you've had the Sabbath day and you've rested, you go in the next day, and that's when you do your charitable deeds and such. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's really where they get uh, church from on Sunday. Okay. What do you mean by that? They ain't church a place for you to go in and take your offering and your tithes and your gifts. Yeah. Ain't it the first day of the week? Yes. Yeah. That's that. That's where they're getting it from. It's actually the first day of the week that you're supposed to go. Um, down to the temple taking your offerings and such and that's why they have church on Sunday okay yeah that's where they're getting that from okay yeah Saturday Sabbath day supposed on Saturday but the day we go into church the first day of the week is Sunday okay, okay? Mm -hmm. and then the fourth well the uh, fourth day of the week is a fasting day yes you only read about that over in uh, the Dachi. yes uh, chapter 8 you find out that we're kind of supposed to fast on the fourth day and the sixth day okay that's yeah, kind of like why we're fasting today Okay. It makes sense that you fast on the sixth day because the seventh day is a Sabbath day and you're doing all your preparation work for that Sabbath day. So you're busy, 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 busy mm -hmm. preparing food so that at sundown when the Sabbath day starts, everything's you know squared away. Right. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like a bread and water day. Yeah. And then there's some other stuff going on here. We see that Hanukkah ends uh, uh, about December, about uh, Tebet 3 which January the 6th falls on Tebet 3 this year. Mm -hmm. And I've got to make sure I say that right. It's not Tebet 3 that's falling on January the 6th. It's, it's January, January the 6th, 6th that's falling on Tebet 3 right. because Tebet 3 never moves. Okay. It's their calendar that's shifting and moving and dancing. Ain't your birthday a different day every year? Yeah. Yeah. When I was born, I was born on a Saturday. Right, mm -hmm. but then you look at my birthday this year. You know, it's not going to yeah. be on Saturday, right? right? Mm -hmm. But I was also born on twenty fourth day of the tenth month, mm -hmm. and my birthday will always be the on that day. Day of the tenth month, They're always. And I don't send me no gifts or cards or mm -hmm. I don't do birthdays or nothing like that. Don't, don't, don't be thinking that. But anyway, um, let's go. What else is in here? We see. Uh, there's an event. The way we do this little calendar, we have an event. You can look in the Bible for an event that occurs on uh, Ezekiel 33, uh, verse 21. That's on Tebet 5. Mm -hmm. uh, Ezekiel 29 and 1. You see that corresponds to Tebet 10. 12. I mean, Tebet 12. Right. So if you look in your Bible for the 10th day, the 12th day of the month, you're going to see a verse in there, uh, uh, Ezekiel 29 and 1. You want to check these out. Yeah. You know, because these, these have to be some prophetic stuff. You're going, this is why I've been doing this. I've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. doing putting these dates with like this. Yeah, um, and we've seen where you go in and you follow that scripture as to what happened those so many years ago. And there is um, like some like a prophecy that's going on now that fit it back then. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, you know, that's really important when we're talking about like the day, like the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of that included in here, but the first day of the 10th month was the big day for Noah. Mm -hmm. As far as, matter of fact, let me, let me go over there and look at that right quick. Hopefully I won't get lost here. Mm -hmm. I see that there are three hits on the 10th day of the first month. Let's see, are they all talking about my... Uh, 
uh, Noah here. Let's see, that's not one. I didn't do that one right. I'll make sure I spell this stuff right, guys. I'm, I put a video up yesterday and I misspelled a three letter word. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Somebody, one of the commenters came in and, and alluded to it, you know. Right. And then, you know, they deleted it, but praise the Lord, I actually saw their comment before it disappeared. I was able to go in and change it. If y'all see any mistakes, guys, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I can count, but I can't spell too good. <laughs> All right, so you have the 10th day of the 10th month. You see, this is when the water decreased for um, Noah. Right. That's mm -hmm. a big deal because that, that, that whole story of the flood, that's that's what we're going through now. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe not so much as you know we can see on that very special year that the Father has planned for us where he regathers his people, you know, the mm -hmm. whole marriage supper that's supposed to last about a year. Mm -hmm. This this right here could correspond to some very significant, some prophetic event, like you said. Mm -hmm. right? And so I did want to bring this up because our calendar doesn't mention it. There's so much going on on the first day of the first month we couldn't squeeze in uh, Genesis five on a little chart there um but you have that noah flood going on and while i'm talking about that guys don't get confused a lot of our ministers aren't doing their necessary homework guys and we're just repeating stuff we hear and when you hear somebody say that uh the months were changed in exodus it wasn't the you know in exodus it says that uh it told the father told Moses that the that um, Abib was the first month, and a lot of people assume that because Moses had to be told that that the months were changed around and they were a month behind. Mm -hmm. That's not true. You have to understand that Enoch was Noah's granddaddy, right? Right. Enoch was Noah's granddaddy. Yeah. Enoch wrote the only book on the planet that tells you how the calendar works. Yeah. Noah at one time with his son and, and his daughter right was the only people on the planet. Yeah, we have this book So that proves that Noah had the book of Enoch mm. now, He didn't have TV and computers and jobs like we do. Do right. you think he wasn't sitting around reading that book? Do oh, you? I'm sure he was. So Noah knew what time it was He knew that it was the 10th day of the 10th month never mind the fact that uh, the books like um Jubilees and Jasher and Genesis and all of those books that were before Moses' time mm -hmm. were actually dictated to him by the Elohim. They taught him that stuff. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to go remember it. This they people act like the story was uh, passed down from son to son to son. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. When Moses found the father in the, after the burning bush and, and was led the people out in the wilderness, the Elohim when they was up on the mountain for the forty days and forty nights. He was writing. He's when he wrote, and the, the Elohim was downloading this to him. Yeah. So that no. So when somebody tells you that the months are six months backwards, no. They mm -hmm. unless they thinking they in the southern hemisphere or somewhere like that. They they are getting ready for uh, uh, spring down there. Or mm -hmm. yeah, they getting ready for not spring but uh, summer. They getting ready for summer. Okay. So there. But we have always been on the same months. The reason why Moses had to be told that it was the first month was just like these people who are listening to this video who are been in Egypt playing around with the Egyptian calendar for the majority of their life using it for when they go to school when they go to you know work and, uh, and such don't know when it is most people just like now don't know when the first month is so somebody has to come and tell them when the first month when the first month is on a sacred calendar otherwise right. you think it's January the first yeah mm -hmm. okay? so that's why Moses had to be told you coming out of Egyptian culture no we are not following the Egyptian calendar. The first day of the sacred month is Abib, right? And okay. the first day of spring. All right, so don't get confused on that, guys. Like I said, people are just repeating stuff. It sounds good to them, and everybody and everybody else agrees with it. And so when they do their sermon, they just repeat it, and nobody argues because they didn't hear somebody else say it is all you know. Yeah. But we're repeating a lie repeated over and over will not become the truth, guys. Especially when it comes to scripture. Maybe when anything else. Maybe politicians and people like that can keep lying. But when it comes to the Bible, you can lie all you want. It ain't never going to change. Right. But anyway, let's come over here and let's look at another kind of a diagram of, of what this all looks like. When it comes... Because, wait a minute, I skipped something, did I? Yeah, right here I want to talk about the Day of Remembrance. The Day of Remembrance. And I go one of my misspelled words. <laughs> let's go ahead and fix it, y'all. I, I, I haven't... Well, it wasn't misspelled. You just forgot to... Add something. Well, that's I got most of the letters. Is what you're saying? <laughs> I don't think you don't think that's good. I, don't think, I think you got to get all of them. <laughs> all right. Let's get back where we were. Um, 
review. Uh, I'm working this out, guys. Like I said, this is my first. I've been wanting to do it like this for a while. Um, do a class where everybody can chime in, ask questions, and then go back later. And, do and we do have a quite a few questions. For well, uh, well, before we get into the day, I remember, let's get the questions. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, let's go back to the top. And we're going to start at <clears throat> what I believe is the first question, and that comes from Joe Mott, who says, would, an, would another verification of the calendar be history itself? How persecution of the Jews stopped at the Constantine, Constantine and Hillel changed the calendar. Would another verification of the calendar be history itself? Oh, I, let me see. Yeah, the fact that they were using, if I understand it right, the fact that they were using this calendar and they were being persecuted and persecuted and persecuted, all of a sudden Hillel too comes up with what they call now the Jewish calendar and the persecution stopped. Mm. Everybody happy with the Jewish community now. The the Romans are now have now helped the Jewish community to actually you know be over there in Jerusalem where they're at now. You know do you know all of that UN stuff. But yeah, that's 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 a that's a good point. It kind of proves that our calendar is wrong. Otherwise, we would still be getting persecuted for it. Right, right. Uh, Hoya Morris asks, the New Year is in March, right? Um, let's go back to our thing here. Let's go all the way back and go show you how to do it. She said the new moon is in March. The new year. The new, the new year, year is in March. In March right. Um, can't use this one. Let's go. I think I just said it, but we're going to come up here. Okay, so you're looking at spring right here, right? Mm-hmm. Now, so the next year, 2022, the way you do this is you go down and you find, you look for the year, 2022. Then you look for your month. That's January the 31st. The next one, that's the, that's January 31st. That's mm -hmm. March the 2nd. Mm -hmm. Then you come down here to April the 1st. Okay. So no, the first day of the uh, month for 2022 will be in April. April. Yeah, okay. somewhere around April the 2nd or April the 3rd. Right. Well, it, I, my thing, it says right here at 1 a.m. That was 1 a.m. So it's going to take at least 24 hours. So that'll put you on four two, seeing the uh, with a with the first moon big enough for anybody to see will be at one a.m. Mm -hmm. But you actually ain't gonna see it because it's gonna be set and gone. So it'll be the next day on four three that you'll actually see the new moon. So that's my prediction for the first day of the year is April the third. Okay. Um, we have Rose Cooper and Hoya Morris again says that they are continuing to work on their sundial. Yeah, yeah, guys, I, if you notice my sundial, I don't talk much about it. It's because I moved it. I <laughs> tested it. I was out there and I was looking and I, I, I saw something. And if you remember all the videos we did last year, you know, the um, um, spring equinox started about March the 18th and all of that. Well, I was pretty, pretty sure and until um, sometime around the summertime and while I was messing around trying to get it right um, me and Christian loosened up a boat and the thing shifted on us and now we gotta wait till uh, April gotta wait till April to reset it yeah I remember you coming in the house and well I think March, I had, March I gotta wait till March to reset it yeah. I think I asked you you know that I noticed that you haven't been doing anything on the sundial and you said yeah, it's that broke. I broke my sundial up. yeah <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 I could work with it. It's still useful. Uh, you know, the, the shadow length only moved maybe a, a quarter of an inch. But I'm an engineer. A quarter of an inch, you don't play. No, that's mm -hmm. too much. That could, that could cost somebody. Uh, that, that right there is actually the only thing that I've, I've called the legacy to this property. Mm -hmm. And I plan on being here when I leave. People using that sundial. So it's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. you know, as long as the Lord allow me to be here long enough to, to get it right. Yeah. So, sorry about that, guys, but let's start getting our sundials together. Check out my videos. You can get a old satellite dish, the old cheap, broke you know, satellite dish. Don't nobody want in the backyard. They make excellent sundials. And you, all you need is a uh, screw and some nuts and some spray paint, and you got you a sundial that's made out of metal, ready to sustain hurricanes, fires, floods, meteors, 
you know, unless it take a direct hit. Well, I know. It'll be there after the tribulation. I know you have done a class, um, but Joe Mott says, she says, she's working on her sundial. I have the satellite dish, but not sure how to set up the shadow line. Okay, we've got classes on that. Look for the gates and the portals. We've done we've done classes on that. Um, I may have to put together a um, a list. Um, but the but the way the, the the shadow lines have to work. Let me go back to this slide up here. This right here is actually a picture of my sundial. That's why it's shaped like that. And this is what it looks like on the sundial, right? But these lines, what you have to do to get these lines is you have to wait till uh, April. The 19th, and all day on April the 19th, you have to sit there and dot your sundial, make marks every 15 minutes, every hour, or whatever you want to do, how, how detailed you want it. But you have to make that line all day long, all the way across your sundial. That's how you create the lines. That's how I create them. You can guess, but it's, but they're not straight. They're not straight lines. They're curved. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can actually get the... Um, the distance from the middle, you can do that by calculation. You can use trigonometry, you know, mm -hmm. to, to easily do that. Um, these distance right here, but once you start getting out into these curved areas out here, no, nah, you you ain't gonna be able to calculate. Well, you might, but I can't. Mm -hmm. I ain't even gonna try it. So you have to sit there. I got plenty of kids, and you know, yeah. make them sit there and take turns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff asks. So Monday is a Sabbath, starting tonight, of course. Do we treat Tuesday after the new moon make for consecutive Sabbath days? Yes. The new moon is a type of Sabbath day. It is a holy day. That's that day when um, um, we read about over there with uh, David and Moses, Jonathan. Those guys were playing out in the woods with the arrow. And, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That was all going on. That they, they, they were having big events on that day, right? Um, it's not a full-fledged Sabbath day. Um, it, it doesn't have all of the rules of the Sabbath day. Like, I haven't found any verses that say you can't cook. I haven't found any verses that say you can't make a fire. And I, and I have cooked and I have made plenty of fires on the new moon day and I ain't got a whipping yet. Right? Mm -hmm. But So, it does say don't do any buying or selling. So there is some just and um, forty six Ezekiel forty six says that you know we get a spiritual download on that day, so it is like a Sabbath day, and he's right. They're back to back, so you will have a full fledged Sabbath day starting tonight. Those who are observing, who are sabotaging the Sabbath day tonight, will have a full fledged Sabbath day starting on tonight as soon as the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. It will end at sundown tomorrow, and then we'll go out there and observe the moon. If there is a moon, if, if the moon does appear tomorrow, uh, we will blow the trumpets, letting everybody know that, it's, that, it, that the new moon has occurred and the new moon will be on that day. If it doesn't, if it doesn't appear on the 3rd, that will make the 4th the 30th day of the month. Right. Every 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 other month we get an extra day, like you know the pagan. I don't call them pagans, but the man calendar they get a long weekend every once in a while. Mm -hmm. We get a long weekend every other month, right? Sometimes our months have twenty um, twenty uh, nine days. Sometimes our month I have thirty days. Right. It's actually because the months are twenty nine point five four five four five four repeating. That's how many days are in a month. Twenty nine point five four. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you get a whole day. Sometimes you don't. Okay. Right. And so we are anticipating two Sabbath days in a row. Well, we're anticipating a new moon followed by a new moon the next day. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Camp fasting, and this refers to um, when you talked about giving days. Mm -hmm. Camp fasting be giving also, like Shepherd of Hermas talks about. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you think about, you know, doing good deeds for such, um, I don't really believe in a no food fast based on Isaiah chapter 58 where he kind of, you know, chastises us, you know, for, you know, doing that. And, you know, he says, is it that you don't believe or we don't practice it? Uh, both. I don't, we don't practice it because I don't believe that we are supposed to do a no food, a no food fast. Well, let me put, let me put it like this. I don't believe based on scripture now. That a no food fast, and she knows Herman says the same thing. A no food fast does nothing for your righteousness or your spirituality. Correct. It's I only a physical thing. Correct. Right. I so believe that. yeah, if you want to hone your your senses or whatever, you know what I'm saying. If you want, you know, yeah, fast, go without food. You'd be like that hungry tiger out there, you know, sharp as a tack. But as far as your spirituality, spiritual growth, 
spiritual growth comes from charitable deeds and doing stuff for others and such like that. So, so that's what she means by giving and fasting. Right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. You know, so we actually could put the first day of the fasting days too as well. Mm. Yeah, good point. Okay. And here's uh, just, and this is a statement to reset the sundial, you have to wait an extra month. Is that a question? I believe so, because this is also from Hoya Morris, and I believe she says she's still working on her sundown. No, what it is, is you have to have the shadow of the sun. Well, I ain't going to say you have to. Somebody else may know how to do it without it. I, I, I just started working on sundowns this year, and I promise you, I'm, I don't know as much as anybody as on a sundown. But the way I said it is I have to wait till the spring equinox, right at high noon. You have to be standing. And that's the, how risky is that? You got like one second to get this thing right, mm. and that's how I do it. And if you know, if I miss it or something happened, then we're gonna come up with some other ways. We're gonna start using some calculators and such. But if she finds out a better way to do it, share it with me, please. But from what I, the way I do it, because I want mine so precise and so accurate, I'm going to wait to exactly. High noon, not 12 o'clock, but high noon, 12.41 or whatever it is. And I'm going to uh, loosen those bolts up on that sundial. And I'm going to turn it until it lines up right perfectly where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to lock it in. And that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. Mother Rose says that it's an all-day job with yeah. the sundial. Yeah, yeah. She knows it. It's, all, it's definitely literally all-day job. You, you, It's all-day job. You mm -hmm. have to be there from sun, uh, to get a good... To get a good uh, accurate reading, to get a yeah, to get an all day reading. If you want an all day reading, you won't have to be there all day. If you don't start at twelve o'clock, well, you ain't got nothing early in the morning. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Again, if you don't have an old Direct TV sundial in your yard, your neighbor who does not use Direct TV or has three or four of these sundials in their yard will actually be glad. For you to come in and, and get them and bring them to your house and set them up. So start getting your sundials and, you know, I'm trying to find a picture here so we can, you know, have these things. If you have a sundial in your yard and you're still alive, you will be the most important person in your community. Because everybody's going to depend on you to know what time it is. Nobody's going to be able to tell what day it is without without you and your sundial. And once again, we want to reiterate that this is important because of these days and um, different events that happen on um, the sacred calendar. Any more questions? Nope, I think that's it. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is the Day of Remembrance. Right. This is an extremely important day. Why? Because we keep forgetting it. <laughs> <laughs> nobody remembers remember the day. Yeah, yeah nobody, nobody remembers, remembers the Day of Remembrance. But you see here that it is, it is, it is actually the tenth day. Of, I mean, the first day of the tenth month, which means that when we see this new moon. We're actually going to be on this day of remembrance. Okay. You see that this was a big deal. Moses, uh, Noah made a big deal out of this this uh, this day here. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is the same day that these waters rested. Yes. This day of remembrance is huge, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have one, uh, like I said, the first month, the uh, fourth month, um, which falls right around Juneteenth, or falls after Juneteenth. The first new moon after Juneteenth will be the uh, uh, day of remembrance for the fourth month. I think that's why they have such thing as a Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. I don't think it makes sense to me. And then, um, of course, the first day of the seventh month is the memorial blowing the trumpets. Right. We usually don't miss that one. But who knows about this tenth month day? We keep forgetting it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I bring it up. we got to remember these days. Um, I didn't put the verse in here from Enoch that says how we greatly err by not doing this. In fact, that's how we keep getting messed up on this yeah, calendar. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, people don't understand that there's a 364-day calendar. We keep It's because we keep forgetting the days of remembrance. It says it right there in the book of Jubilees. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. um, it kind of looks like this, where um, at the beginning of the year, you have um, um, a... Uh, um, they call it a intercalary day, but it's really a seasonal day. Okay. Because you, you know, you basically we're getting ready to celebrate the first day of winter, mm -hmm. right? It's just a celebration day. Um, I might pop some firecrackers myself, you know, mm -hmm. and give me some barbecue going. You know, that's that gonna be mine. It's gonna be New Year's, but it'd be a day of remembrance kind of thing. And then you go ninety days, and then you get another day, then ninety, and then you get another day. And then 90, get another day, and then 90, get another. That's how you have a 364-day calendar. The seasons are only 90 days long, but we have these extra days in here. 
right? Yeah. And you say, somebody say, well, wait a minute. Um, through observation, I see that it's 365 days. Well, when you look at the sacred calendar, um, the way it's supposed to look, it seems as if there's almost like a half a day missing. Mm-hmm. Right at the end, mm-hmm. that will not let you continue on. Mm-hmm. You have to reset. You have to reset that because it's made like that. You have to re- the, the sacred calendar resets itself every single year. Oh wow! Yeah, As, think about that. Mm-hmm. The, the Earth is shifting. The, the 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 reason why they have a Gregorian calendar was because their calendar had lost eleven days since the since uh, they had created the other calendar. Mm-hmm. They, the Messiah was walking around ten days earlier, like the Jews now realizing that there's a mismatch. So they they had to change the calendar, and that's where they came up with the Gregorian calendar. Mm-hmm. Thing about it, when they changed it to the Gregorian calendar back there in like the 16th century, it created riots all over the world, mm-hmm. and you know they burned down cities. Oh wow. They yeah, over that, and so I can imagine now they're hesitating. That's why they don't want to. They don't want to change the calendar. Now mm-hmm. we'll go. You know, now we all gonna find it. It was just a few people knew about it then. Everybody, you gonna change the calendar now? Everybody right. gonna know. Yeah. And then people mm-hmm. think you're trying to change. Could you imagine a yeah. Donald Trump or a Biden yeah. saying, "Hey, we need a new calendar," or a Pope saying, "Hey, we're gonna change the calendar." Yeah. You yeah. you gonna change my feast days? Yeah. And so I don't think they're gonna change it. And if they don't keep updating the calendar, eventually they're. Um, they're going to be celebrating uh, Independence Day in the snow. Hmm. Christmas, you know, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to have to take off. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah. it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, well, our Father's calendar, because it doesn't have 365.25 days in it. It only has 364. It has to reset every single year. Oh, wow. Yeah, every single year. It snaps back into place. Automatically on its own. Perfect. Ain't, ain't, ain't no joke. Father ain't no joke with his calendar now. All right? So, the day of remembrance, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, soon as, again, as soon as we get this um, uh, new moon, um, we will be on this day of remembrance. Uh, like I said, I want to get me a firecracker, at least one big one. I ain't going to spend a whole lot of money, <laughs> but I do want to, like somebody woke me up on New Year's with firecracker. What time was that? Oh, Five, about six, six o'clock. Yeah, about yeah. six. And so uh-huh. I'm going to bust off. I like to get up at four myself. Mm-hmm. I might wait till the sun come up. But I'm going to get the loudest one, the loudest one in there. That's what's the loudest one y'all got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'm going to follow it up by blowing my horn. You know? mm-hmm. So far, yeah. <laughs> no, no, so far, right? So, <clears throat> all right. So let's remember the day of remembrance, guys, ever, forever. Let's remember the day of remembrance. It's always the celebration of spring, the celebration of summer, fall, and winter. Now, like I said, this is, this is the, this data sheet is probably the main part of the calendar. That other thing looks pretty. But this is it right here. Okay. Yeah. You, 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 you can actually have this one on your wall and actually be able to keep up with the months. Mm-hmm. You guys can download it in, in the description. When you look in the description of the video, it says download, blah, blah, blah. That's what this is right here. You can go to my Google Drive and download it to your phone or download it to your thing. You can even take it to Walmart. And a little thing, get it blowed up and make you a big chart out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and keep it. You know, mm-hmm. have it get it on laminated paper or whatever and make a big deal out of it or stick it in your Bible or whatever. Because unless there's an error, unless somebody comes and says, I find a mistake in this thing, you know, that, that new, that 0% moon don't fall on that particular day. You know, this thing right here will last forever. Yeah. Until this rock go up in flames. Or nuclear blast knocks it out of its orbit or something like that. This is going this this calendar right here is a perpetual calendar that works forever. The only difference between this one and Hillel 2's calendar is this one takes into account the stars. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. His didn't. This one yeah. takes into account the position of the stars and it's telling you to observe the moon. It's just it's just a hint. It don't even it don't even have the new moon on here. This is the zero percent moon. This ain't a new moon. This is a zero, and all it's doing is giving you a hint and when the new moon gonna come. Mm-hmm. If you see the new moon, zero percent moon here at twelve, then tomorrow we'll start looking for the new moon, looking yeah. to see it. Alrighty. Um, looks like that's it. End of that presentation. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anybody got any more questions or anything on the calendar? Uh, here's a statement that I thought was kind of, you know, I think, no, you probably have been through this, this also where she says, um, this comes from Rose Cooper, who says, some people laugh about the sundial, others say that it's a good idea. Yeah, people laugh, you know, think about it, we in this posse and era, people laughing at the wrong stuff. People don't know what to laugh at, you don't know what's funny. You're about to find out what funny is. 
You know what I mean? And a person who has a sundial knowing what time it is and keeping up with that, yeah, they said, yeah, they laughed at Noah too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they mm -hmm. laughed at Noah. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Giggle, giggle, giggle. <laughs> and it's going to be gurgle, gurgle, gurgle in a minute. This right here is a guy named Dirac Ibar. I asked him if I could show this this video. He's a he's a rapper. Okay. He's got a channel, Dirac Ibar, and he and he's doing pretty good, you know, as a rapper. I don't know if he's making a lot of money and all of that, mm -hmm. but he he got this off of our thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm looking and I sent him an email. I said uh, I sent him a comment. I said who who did this? Whose numbers are these? Mm -hmm. I think I was actually hoping. That he was going to tell me somebody else did it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, was, I think I was hoping, let's see, he might have responded and see if I can actually play it. Most definitely, okay. I was kind of hoping that somebody else had came up with the numbers. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, because sometimes I feel like I'm the only one in this. And mm -hmm. somebody had actually done the same thing, but he didn't say he got it from me. So I said, hey, can I play it in the video? Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to end it with that. All right, so let's hear this. Um the song. All right, yeah, this is a song by Derek. Uh, Derek, I'm man, messed it up. Derek Ibar, and he got this data from our thing here, and you know, so we're really excited, you know, that he's sharing this information. He's, yeah. he's, he's got a lot of great videos. He's one of the best ones. He's uh, one of the best uh, songs. He's mm -hmm. is on the feast days. Okay. I mean that. That song was really, really good. I'm going to have to feature that one day when we get into music again. But, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close out with this little song here from Dirac Ibar. And we do thank you guys for um, being a part of the live screen. We're sorry about the, all the buffering, but we do thank you uh, for being here. And we hope you were able to uh, receive a lot of the information. And, you know, we're excited to, you know, send, us, send Coach pictures of your sundial. Um, I think yeah. he would love to see them. And the fight at Yahoo.com. Yeah. And with that, we're going to say shalom. Peace and safety into your home. Stand up right in the face of evil. It's that time. It's midnight. Look. 5,994. I tell him board the ark before he locked the door. Light versus darkness, this the final war. It's too late to be playing. I keep time is short. If we don't say it, who gon' warn them? Turning from commandments, that's what scattered us to corners. Everywhere we go, the covenant we made is gon' follow us, and it's gon' be a curse if our sins keep piling up. That's facts. The four corners is our address. All over the earth while the land rests. We was worshiping idols, disobeying laws. Just know them same laws gon' break the chains off. So this what we gon' do. Point the people to the shepherd, he gon' heal the nation. Sun, moon, and stars, feasts in their proper places. If we follow him, we gon' survive this tribulation. It's a narrow path, everybody ain't gon' make it. I ain't saying I will, I but don't play favorites. No respect to persons, I don't do it, he got several servants. Tell him watch your back, stay on point. These devils lurking, who is that man? Will he hear with a message for the seven churches? Was he the man on the river back in Daniel 12? Nebuchadnezzar threw three men inside the flame. They looked in and saw another man standing there. The Holy One, the seed of David, break free. Flee the matrix, repent and be baptized, I'ma keep it basic, written in stone, they'll never erase it, we that generation.